Hey, hamster, what you playing? Oh, hey, Bob. I was just using the Switch, but uh, you can use the TV. Actually, I was just thinking about that console. Do you remember when the thought of bringing a console game around with you was just totally bonkers? Yeah, well, the best I could do at the time was bring around NES ports like Super Mario Brothers for my Game Boy Color. It was amazing even then. Kinda makes it a little weird looking at the Switch now. The Switch kinda did change everything, but I remember way back in the day when several huge SNES titles were all being ported to Game Boy Advance. Except Metroid. It was my first chance to play these console games, and I got to bring them around wherever I wanted! These are all on the Nintendo Switch Online Library, aren't they? Not the point. What I want to talk about today is the first Super Nintendo game I ever got to play as a kid, and I got to play it wherever I went. It also happened to be my first ever Zelda game. It's a shame that was probably the best Zelda game as well. You think if we time traveled back to your younger self and told him that, would he stop playing Zelda from then on? Probably not. The game was just that fun. But what's the point in playing new titles if the series you like can't top itself ever again? Pokemon fans, I'm looking at you. All right, tell me why this is so great. Oh man, I could go on. But don't accuse me of having nostalgia bias with this one. People do that hardcore with Ocarina of Time, but all the Zelda innovations that they loved came from this game. Really, hamster? What? I I'm gonna play it on the Switch. Well, before we move on, I should mention there were some slight changes made to the original GBA port that I played decades ago. But they were mostly small and insignificant, so we'll be focusing on the SNES original. Decades? Oh man, we're getting too old for this. I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is the Zelda game that helped define the series as what we know it as today. Almost everything you know about Zelda and how the formula works comes from A Link to the Past. First things first, they abandoned that awful 2D side-scroller thing Zelda 2 attempted and went back to having top-down combat again but this time with a slight angle to show off houses, cliffs, and characters, which will become a staple in pretty much all top-down games to come. Finally, instead of just useless poking, Link swings his sword horizontally in a much-needed change, allowing for some fluid and hectic combat possibilities. The stupid random encounters, experience points, and minimap overworld from Zelda 2 are also gone in favor of a reworked Zelda 1 open-world map style. In fact, just pretty much forget everything about Zelda 2 except for the magic meter. Honestly, I find the non-linearity of this game to be its greatest strength. Aside from tackling dungeons in almost any order you wish, there's tons of side quests and places to explore, rewarding you with powerful upgrades and new items like pieces of heart in order to increase your max HP. So this game is basically everything great about Breath of the Wild, except on the SNES, and not nearly as barren. Plus, you can actually collect an arsenal of unique item and equipment upgrades desperately needed in that game. One of the bosses can only be defeated with an item only found in a totally optional, off-the-road cave. This deliberate move really expresses why I think this game is so much better than the later Zeldas. It encourages exploration and freedom over linear, hand-holdy formulation. It's funny how when they finally came around to making the sorta kinda not really remake Link Between Worlds, they sabotaged their own creative framework by just allowing the player to purchase or rent all weapons in the entire game for rupees. That aside from the bland painting gimmick really destroyed this original concept. We're talking about Link to the Past here. Anyway, aside from adding so many future Zelda staples like Kakariko Village, Lake Hylia, Sages, Kukos, Moblins, and a little thing called the Master Sword, this game also introduced an amazing Dark World mechanic where you could warp to and from overlaid maps in order to solve puzzles and beat dungeons. Then there's the long list of items and design choices that should have become Zelda staples because they were so interesting here. But hey, it's great to see a dev team actually trying new things and create something this refreshing to begin with. There's so many things to discover out in the vast light and dark worlds of Hyrule, and the controls are so finely tuned that it all just feels so great that it's no shock that this game basically became the groundwork for nearly all future Zeldas to come. But for the love of God, don't attack the cuckoos! You think it's strange that the scariest thing in this game is a brigade of angry chickens when you fast travel by calling a duck with a flute and dangling by its feet? 
Zelda games are weird, man. Hot take, people only love Ocarina of Time because it's linked to the past in 3D. Oh, come on, you've already upset the Link Between Worlds fans. Don't touch Ocarina of Time. Well, cover it another time. Plus, you're right, we don't want to deal with hordes of angry, ignorant Zelda fans. Uh, yeah. Another hot take. This is the best Zelda game because it's the most like Metroid. Come on! <laughs> Maybe it's just my preference, but SNES games just look great already. But this colorful world may be the system at its best, alongside the likes of the creative and colorful Yoshi's Island and Super Metroid. Though the game does hit some slowdown when too many things are on screen at once. Granted, this is rare, but it can still happen. The graphics ended up fixing some of the original's biggest problems, like now indicating bombable walls with cracks and other graphical clues to help the player uncover goodies. The text boxes and UI also look great, but navigating your menu can get a little confusing until you get familiar with it. The creature designs and special effects all look and feel right in the world, especially the alternate dark world variations of everything in the light world. It's a real treat to discover. This is one of those rare games where the charm of an original concept is perfected on new hardware. Most importantly, Link has pink hair. Your argument that any other Link is better than this one was just rendered invalid. This is the first time that we get a real story in a Zelda game at all, setting up plenty of tropes that will sound very familiar if you've played literally any subsequent entry in the series. Link is awoken from sleep by Zelda telepathically reaching out to him for help, claiming she's locked up in the dungeons of Hyrule Castle. Link's uncle soon departs with a sword and shield into the stormy night, asking Link to stay put until he returns. So of course you leave the house. Completely unarmed, Link infiltrates Hyrule Castle and discovers his dying uncle at the bottom of a hidden passage, who gives Link his starting equipment before ultimately passing away in a dark corridor. Wow, that was depressing. Link fights his way into the castle, saving Zelda and escorting her through a bleak sewer system and into the back of a church cemetery. Link then sets off on a quest in order to find the three pendants in order to pull the Master Sword from its stone pedestal and defeat Aghanim, the mastermind behind the plot to kidnap Zelda and overthrow Hyrule. Once the pendants have been collected from various dungeons, Link draws the Master Sword and returns to the sanctuary to find that he is too late and Zelda has been kidnapped. Link and Aghanim clash at Hyrule Castle, where upon Aghanim's defeat, Link is teleported into the Dark World. Link challenges seven more dungeons in order to free seven maidens, allowing him to access Hyrule Castle once more for a final battle with Aghanim, where upon defeat, a ghastly bat flies out of his body and transforms into Ganon, whom Link must defeat in order to finally save Zelda and obtain the Triforce. So how many Zelda games did that just describe? Collect three things to stop the evil, but the evil gets away with something anyway, and now you gotta collect more things to stop evil for reals this time, and save Zelda, defeat Ganon, and get the Triforce. Huh, uh, better question, how few Zelda games does that not describe? The only reason so many games follow the formula laid out by Link to the Past was because Link to the Past worked. And it worked well. What about your uncle? Shouldn't we, I don't know, go back for him and give him a proper burial or something? Actually, at the end of the game, he's shown to be alive and well. I guess he just pretended to die back then for drama, and he was actually fine and decided not to tell you about his health or whereabouts until you've completely finished with your quest. Oh, uncle, you're such a tease. SNES music has a distinct sound that I miss when playing modern pixel graphics games. It's one thing that developers seem to always forget about when trying to emulate this era of games. These tracks are atmospheric and incredible, and not to mention nearly all became famous, iconic Zelda staples from here on out. I know it's getting old saying this in every single section, but it's true. Nearly all Zelda music you know and love originated from this game. Hyrule Castle's themes, the Fairy Fountain, Kakariko Village are obvious picks, but the remastered Hyrule Field and famous item acquisition fanfare become what you know them as today from this game. Also, the Dark World theme is probably my favorite track in any Zelda game. So it's a good time to mention that the GBA port slightly updated some of the music, as well as adding Link's vocal Hya! Hya! sound effects straight out of Ocarina of Time. People are really torn on this inclusion, but honestly, I think it just gives more character and life to Link, much like how the GBA port of Yoshi's Island did the same for Yoshi. I so did not find enough to complain about with this game. I'm gonna get accused of nostalgia bias just because my first Zelda also happened to be empirically superior in terms of innovation and creativity to literally all later installments. Don't worry, the internet will hate you no matter what you think. 
and especially for having the audacity for telling them why you like a video game so much. Do you like The Legend of Zelda? If so, by association, you already like this game. You've... Seriously not played this game yet? I'm not exaggerating when I say that this isn't just one of the best Zelda games ever made, but this is also one of the best games ever made. I legitimately tried so hard to come up with snarky criticisms for this game for this review, and I still couldn't. And if you know me and how harshly I criticize games that I love, let that be a testament to how incredible this game is. I am so ripping on a game next episode to compensate. The positive gamer in me unsurprisingly gives Zelda A Link to the Past the highest of honors with a 10 out of 10. This may be Zelda at its finest, with a perfect balance of story and exploration, where open world puzzle solving and discovering secrets really matter, making for the most refreshing experiences the franchise is still attempting to properly replicate to this day. The critical gamer in me is grasping for straws when trying to find faults in Zelda A Link to the Past. So I give in and award it with a well-deserved golden second 10 out of 10. Wow, this is only the second time we've ever given out a double 10 out of 10. So this is a big deal seeing my critical side this hung up over a game. Just look at the long list of great games we've already reviewed and couldn't muster that second score. Thing is, there's only two other games that come to mind that I can see myself giving another 10 out of 10. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what they are and if I even agree with you on them. Excuse me, princess? So what did you guys think? Tell us what your positive and critical sides think of Zelda A Link to the Past in the comments below. But if you want to claim that I'm too biased towards this game to properly criticize it, then you're just playing with yourself. I made this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obligatory link noises. Oh, hi. Uh, do you have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself? Join the discussion on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. Patreon members also get first picks, so check out the links in the description for more information. And as always, thanks to our amazing Patreon members, Atomic Thomas, Arrow, Kai, Ben, Rowan, Erica, SquadFam, Sid, and Denny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Boop!